Welcome back to Father and Son Fix. In this episode, we're going to show you how to replace the battery on your jump starter battery pack. Now, we're using a peak jump starter battery pack here. You could have one that includes an air compressor, and it may be a different brand, but all these steps will still apply, and you'll be able to replace your battery. Now, here are the tools that you're going to need. A set of gloves. We recommend them being rubber coated. Also, a screwdriver to open up the battery pack. And a set of needle nose adjustable pliers or wrenches. And of course, a multimeter to test the battery and the replacement. All right, let's dig right in and start taking this apart. Now we've got gloves on for safety. It's a good idea to keep them on throughout the process. It's up to you, but we think it's best. Now, take a look here. These are the areas where you're going to find screws. Any indentation like that on your model, they may be covered with plastic stickers. And you're going to want to check for all the locations for screws. As you'll see, we missed a few. Now, this is what the screws look like for our model. And they're not very well made. They're aluminum. The heads were stripping out very easily. We'll show you here. It's a Phillips head, but the head had already started to strip out. You have to be very careful when you're unscrewing these. Don't over torque them, taking them out or putting them back in. All right, we've already unscrewed ours. Now you're going to look around the seam of your battery pack to see, oh, okay, on ours, we're going to need to remove that sticker. On yours, make sure there's no other things that are blocking the seam that are going to prevent you from opening up your battery pack. Okay, here we are, we're taking off the sticker now. And be gentle, if you wanna save the sticker, you can, of course, you probably know what those positions are at this point. We're gonna preserve our sticker, so carefully removing it, and then we're gonna set it aside. Now, for safety purposes, we're gonna cover the ends of the jump starter cables with gloves. This may be overly cautious. We just want to prevent any accidental contact between those two ends before we remove the battery and, of course, when we put the new battery back in. So we're going to tape them up in some gloves. Bye-bye. See you later, positive lead. All right, now we're going to do the same thing for the negative lead. I'm going to wrap that guy up as well. Bye-bye. We'll see you later. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you want to make sure you find all the screw locations. And once you do, you can start prying it apart. Here, we thought we had gotten all the screws, and we hadn't. And knowing the right amount of force to use when prying something apart is something that takes experience over time. And as we were going about it, as you can see, we were trying different pry points, and it just didn't feel right. It was too much pressure. So we looked again and we discovered after removing the cables that there were more screw points. Also underneath the cable on that side as well. Now this is where things started to get a little bit interesting. As we mentioned, the screws weren't very well made. And most of these screws on the back underneath the cables came off pretty easily. However, as we soon found out, the heads of the bottom screws started to strip out extremely and we were stuck in a bit of a jam and started going through all the different screwdrivers that we had until we arrived at a solution. The solution was our original set, the OG set of precision screwdrivers from Stanley and the big Phillips head on that. Let us get in there and get those screws out of there. With that removed, we could easily open the case, and there it was. The bad battery. All right, let's get in and take a look at this. These jump starter packs are very simple. You've got a circuit board, and you've got the battery, and, and there's really not much more. The circuit board and the functions will vary depending upon the model. And really, it's you're carrying around a battery, and, and that battery acts as a supplement to your battery in your vehicle when it goes low. 
And there you can see there's the jump starter switch on the side that connects to the positive lead. And that's the battery type that we need to replace or upgrade if we can. Now we're just going to confirm that the battery is dead and whew, yeah, 6.36 volts. It's time for this battery to go. Now let's measure to make sure in addition to checking the model, just to double check, we measured our battery to make sure. And this battery size is 7.13 inches by 3.03 inches by 6.57 inches. Now we're going to disconnect the wires from the terminals. If you have a set of 8 millimeter wrenches, it makes it a little bit easier. Of course, you can use needle nose pliers or adjustable pliers. Once you loosen the bolt, then you can spin the nut off the rest of the way by hand. Make sure you keep track of that and then also the washer. So here we are loosening it and once we've got it loose, you can just spin it off the rest of the way. And be careful here, as we said, and pay attention to the order that the bolt, the cable, and the washer and the nut, the order that they all go in so you can replicate that order when you're reconnecting the new battery. And here there's the wire that goes to the circuit board. Remember that location. Yours may be different. You can take a photo that makes it easier to check when you're putting in the new battery. All right, now we're going to disconnect the positive side. Same process. It helps sometimes to have an offset wrench to get to some of those tight places or the needle nose pliers like we showed at the beginning. And it can be a little fiddly getting the nut and the washer off with the gloves. However, we want to be on the safe side. And if we're sharing this with others, we want to recommend the most safe practices. All right, remember the order of the wires, the bolt, the nut, and the washer on this side as well. Or take a picture, which can help. Now it's time to remove the bad battery. Okay, now we're going to remove the padding on the battery. And your battery may or may not have padding in your jump starter pack. As we started to peel off the padding, unfortunately it tore a little bit. So we got our panel removal tools that have a plastic wedge tool and use that to carefully remove the padding so that we could then apply the padding to the new battery that we're gonna put in. So here we are carefully sliding up to remove that adhesive without tearing that padding. All right, now that that one's done, now we're gonna go on to the other sides. You wanna use the right amount of pressure here so that you don't tear it and carefully remove it and so that you're able to retain the padding to use when you put it on the new battery. All right, the battery's all cleaned up. And now, as we mentioned, not only a replacement, but an upgrade. And the battery we ordered is made by a company called Mighty Max. And their slogan, are you powered to the max? Now we have no official relationship. This is just the deal that we got when we were looking for a replacement battery, uh, but we love that slogan. Anyway, as we're opening up, we found the Battery came with new hardware, which is nice. We're not going to use it, but we'll save it for a future project. And let's get this out so we can compare it to the bad battery. And as you can see, they're the exact same size and the terminals are in the same location. And let's take a look at the specifications to make sure that this replacement is going to work. And the charging and the running voltages are within spec. And most important when you replace your battery on your jump starter is that you make sure that it's a sealed battery. As we mentioned, this is more than a replacement, it's an upgrade 
The new battery has 22 amp hours, which is roughly 20% more capacity, which is awesome. Now, we're going to use some double-sided tape to attach the old padding to the new battery. Now, you may or may not have to do this for yours. On ours, we wanted to keep that padding so that battery's nice and snug in there. And here, we're going to apply some double-sided tape. And we'll show you a few tricks that we use for double-sided tape. If you've got any tips for double-sided tape, we'd love to hear them. Leave a note down in the comments. Our method, we like to use the back of the scissors to really make sure the one side of the tape is bonded to the surface. And then, of course, we start at a corner and start peeling away and carefully peel that top layer. And when we can, if we need to, we'll press that bottom layer back down again to hold that on the surface and then we're able to securely pull up the backing of the double-sided tape it sounds like such a process and it shouldn't be surely there's some some tip or trick out there maybe something we'll cover in a future episode so that's the first one and then we're going to replace the padding that we took off of the old battery in approximately the same location on the new battery and it sat pretty well and it stuck pretty well without any issue. All right, one down. And we got a few more to go. So we're, we're going to zip through those quickly for you right here. Now you might be wondering, did we try and revive the old battery before we decided to replace it? And yes, we actually used our battery charger and charged it up as much as we could and we only got it up to about 10 volts, so we knew that it needed to be replaced. Buying only the battery was less expensive than buying a whole new jump starter, and it also reduces waste, plus we love fixing things. Now, one thing we should have done, and probably should have tested this before we put the padding on, test the voltage of the new battery to make sure that it was okay. And so here we're testing the voltage and, Woo! 12.76. She's coming in hot. One thing you may have noticed when we opened up the jump starter was this corrosion on the circuit board. And so we're going to clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol and a used toothbrush. You really don't need high tech tools for this. Make sure that circuit board is disconnected from power before you do this. Some of these solder joints on the circuit board were so corroded, we thought they were cold solders and we were going to need to go back in and re-solder them. Thankfully, everything cleaned up pretty well and we didn't have to do any soldering this time around. After you scrub off the circuit board, you're just going to want to dry it off to make sure there's no residual moisture from the isopropyl alcohol. And you'll see in a moment what it looks like. That right there is the corrosion that comes off of the board when you clean it. So even if it's not visible to your eye, if you're in there, why not? It's a good time to clean it. And with all that cleaned up, now it's time to install the new battery. As you fit the battery, you want to gently make sure that it sits securely in place, and that's about it. There's really not much to it. Okay, now we're going to reconnect the wires to the terminals, and as we mentioned before, taking note of the order of the wires, the bolt, the washer, and the nut, and we're going to start with the positive side first. We're going to get things started by hand and then tighten them up with the wrenches. Here we are tightening it up by hand to get it started. Take your time, be patient, and make sure everything goes back in the right order. And again, don't over torque or over tighten any of these bolts. They only need to be securely in place. All right, we're going to finish tightening up the positive lead. Make sure everything's nice and snug. 
Once that's done, time to move over to the negative lead. Same process here. Make sure you have the right order for the wires, the bolt, the washer, and the nut. Get started tightening it up by hand and then move on to using the wrenches or adjustable pliers or needle nose pliers if you have those. And again, don't over torque it. Just make sure it's nice and snug. Now that everything's connected, it's time to seal the deal and put the case back together for the jump starter. And you want to be careful here. Make sure you're not pinching any of the cables and carefully align all of the edges to make sure everything is going to go back together correctly and isn't going to put any pressure or tension on any of the wires or cables. And we're going to go back in with the screws and we were able to get some replacement screws so that we didn't need to use the ones that had stripped heads. We may at some point replace the battery again in the future, who knows, another 10 years or so from now. At that time, we definitely don't want to deal with those aluminum screws. So we got some replacements, which made it a lot easier to put it back together as well. Remember all the screw locations to make sure you're not missing any screws and everything goes back together nice and tight. All right, now it's time to put the sticker back on for the switch and remember to line that up correctly. Get it lined up as best as you can. This is another good example where you may want to take a photo of any stickers or anything overlapping that seam that you need to replace. And there you go. Nice and smooth. Looking good as new. Now you can go ahead and remove the gloves or anything that you use to cover the cables. Remember we said it's a good precaution, so it's good just as safety measure and you can put the cable back in place where it belongs on the battery pack. Same thing. You never know when you can use a hand. So we'll take the glove off of the negative side, wrap that around and make sure that's nice and snug where it should be on the battery pack. We tested with the multimeter so we know the battery is good, but does the jump starter work? The light is green. All right, we did it. One final step, recycle the bad battery at a parts store that looks like this, or an auto parts store that looks like this. Thanks for watching. We hope you have a great day.